Here is your latest African news. Africa wide, the UN admits refugees have faced racism at Ukraine borders. The United Nations has admitted that some non European refugees have faced discrimination while trying to flee to safety at Ukraine borders after their experience were dismissed as lies and Russian disinformation by online commentators. Filippo Grandi, the organization's High Commissioner for Refugees, acknowledged their plight during a press conference, ensuring that everyone receives equal treatment. African people living in the region have said that they have been denied assistance during the worsening crisis, with some taking to social media in recent days to share their experiences. Africa wide. Ukraine's war unleashes a flood of racism by the media and politicians against African war victims. With the escalating violence in Ukraine, many journalists, correspondents, and reporters from many Western media outlets have irked the African audience with their racist remarks. The commentary involved expressing sympathy for Ukrainian victims of the war and shock about the images of people because they seem more European and more civilized than other victims of war. The war has brought to light the balance racism, discrimination, and hypocrisy both by media outlets and Western governments in the treatment of war victims and portrayal of conflict refugees. South Africa South Africa's ambassador flees Kyiv condemns discrimination. According to reports, Andrei Groniwal, the South African ambassador to Ukraine, had to evacuate Kyiv when an armored Russian convoy near the city. The ambassador informed the press that he heard explosions from afar as he parked his car to depart. He is now traveling south in a convoy of two trucks with his wife, three children, and the last remaining embassy personnel en route to Romania, Moldova, or Hungary. He and other colleagues and ambassadors, he noted, had been working tirelessly to ensure the withdrawal of South Africans and other foreigners from Ukraine, some of whom had had been subjected to racism while attempting to flee. Nigeria Nigerian schoolgirls develop anti-kidnapping app emerge finalist of $960,000 global prize. Two Nigerian schoolgirls have emerged finalists of the 2021 Young Tycoon Business Challenge after presenting a business idea for an app that could tackle kidnapping and abduction. The girls, Chioma Abon and Emmanuel Elok, both students of Green Spring Schools in Lagos, say their product will use wearable technology to address the cases of abduction in Nigeria, especially those involving children. The Young Tycoon Business Challenge is a competition for high secondary school students who have entrepreneurship ideas. Its aim is to engage aspiring entrepreneurs from across the world and grant them access to mentorship by Silicon Valley leaders. More than 7,000 participants applied from 80 countries around the world. After three rounds of pitching and developing solid business ideas, 28 finalists have been selected to pitch at a later round. The winning team will get $960,000 worth of prizes, $10,000 in cash, and $950,000 in benefits. Tanzania Tanzania hosts SADC Regional Counterterrorism Center. Tanzania will host a counter-terrorism center in its commercial hub Dar es Salaam to enhance, facilitate, and combat terrorism threats in Southern Africa. The center, launched by the Southern African Development Community, was part of the 16-member bloc's 2015 resolutions to adopt regional efforts against terrorism, violent extremism, and organized crimes. Tanzania's Defense Minister Dr. Stegomano Tax say the country offered to host a regional counter-terrorism center, which will deal with security threats vigorously. Once operational, the center is expected to send Energize with the SADC member states, national and regional early warning centers. Nigeria Senate rejects diaspora vote, special seat for women. Nigeria's Senate has voted to reject adjustments to the structure to permit residents dwelling overseas to vote in nationwide elections. A provision to allocate special seats for women to extend their political illustrations did not pass either. Voters in Africa's most populous nation will go to the polls to elect a brand new president and parliament in February 2023. Hopes that Nigeria's diaspora would participate have been dashed when only 29 senators out of the 92 current supported the bill. For a constitutional invoice to cross, it requires the help of a minimum of two-thirds of the 109-member Senate. Nigeria's diaspora was estimated at 1.7 million as of 2020 by the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Another provision to create special seats for women within the National and Senate Assemblies was rejected by a majority of senators. Aisha Buhari, the spouse of President Muhammadu Buhari, had supported the invoice. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. Great news, you can now pre-order our children's book Mao and the Gardens of Plenty, a book that teaches children the power of great ideas. This book is the best way to start exposing your children to African stories told by Africans. Find the purchase link in the description below. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member, Patreon or donor.
and remember, Africa is watching.